Welcome to the Float Podcast, an entrepreneurial journey. My name is Cawthon Brown, once a wide-eyed hippie traveling the world in my 20s, trying to figure out what my pursuit of happiness is. After visiting over 300 locations and installing over 400 float pods, I have finally found my happiness. Jennifer Bain, thank you for joining the podcast today. I uh, greatly appreciate your business as well with purchasing flow pods from us. Um, you guys have been in business now for what, a couple of years? Um, you guys have been rocking and rolling since COVID. Obviously, that took a toll on everyone's business. But I wanted to first start off and uh, ask you, how'd you get into the business of floating? Well, my story is pretty interesting. So um, it was January of uh, 2018. I did my first float. And I have been searching. I've traveled all over the world trying to find that stillness, that oneness. And after my first float, I looked at my mom and I said, they are selling magic. I'm like, this is the most incredible thing I've ever done. I reached that state of nothingness, my very first float. And I know many people don't achieve that, but I was able to achieve that after my first float. I also have muscular dystrophy and what my body felt after my first float was absolutely and utterly incredible. Um, my feet felt really light. My body felt light. It was airy and it was magical. I mean, the, my entire experience was magical. And um, literally four months later, I, um, we had a contract signed. Um, I believe that this entire project of Heavenly Float Spa was intuitively guided. I believe in, you know, um, that this came from a higher place other than myself. You know, we carry three float pods and, and we put other modalities in there. Um, but they all kind of just evolved. So yeah, it's absolutely incredible. You got into the business set in 2018. Uh, so you guys have been in business now, what, four years now? I can't even do math. Is it a float spa or is it a float center? What do you consider it? A spa. Okay. Do you guys have other modalities other than float pods at your facility? Yes. We have three float pods, two salt caves, an infrared sauna, and a crystal light bed. So you guys have a lot of things going on there. Um, I wanted to ask, has... COVID taken a toll on the business? And if so, has the float pods been able to keep you afloat? No pun intended. Uh, yes. Well, um, Heavenly is located in New York. So New York, they shut me down. Um, I, we, I got shut down in March. They reopened me in uh, July and they shut me back down again in December. Um, did we take a hit? We took a huge hit. However, um, what sustained us was a lot of the other modalities, I will say, uh, the crystal bed. People are looking for healing. People are looking for, you know, float therapy is not mainstream. It's mainstream in other parts of, of the country where we are in, on the East Coast. It's, it's definitely more of a challenge, but if you educate and educate your guests and it's, it's word of mouth, um, when they come in there and they have that experience, you know, we call, we call Heavenly a healing sanctuary and you walk in and it's all about the experience. They have that experience. They're going to push it out to other people. And that's what we've seen during COVID. You know, um, the infrared sauna was, was so popular. The Himalayan salt room, now float therapy is coming back for us. You know, um, we're seeing back numbers when we opened again, you know, but um, it's all about educating your, 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 your guests. More importantly, they need to understand the benefits of float therapy. And I think one of the things that I try to do or we try to do at Heavenly is everybody concentrates on the physical of float therapy, right? Like how your body feels about recovery. But more importantly, what I've known from myself and especially during COVID is there was so much fear in our world and anxiety, right? That... What did people really need? They needed to quiet their mind. When you quiet your mind, you can hear. And that's one thing I talked to Alden about on, on the second podcast was, you know, how the, how it really helps you mentally. I, I struggled with mental and physical health uh, over the course of 2000, from 2010 to probably 2020. I struggled with that and um, was able to get through some of the hurdles because I was able to get my mind on track. Um, mental clarity is one of the things that I, I can say has helped me with on the benefit end and uh, physically, obviously there's tons of benefits there. Muscular dystrophy, I, I'm not too educated on that, but is there a lot of benefits from floating uh, for mu muscular dystrophy? 
Oh, absolutely. Um, I have neuropathy in my feet. I have um, my muscular dystrophy is called fascial scapular humeral dystrophy. It's called FSH. And um, for me, pain in my arms, my legs, my back, my, you know, um, having neuropathy, my neuropathy. And when I tell you it calms down, the burning in my feet dissipates. My feet feel like, I feel like when I don't float, there's a bowling ball on my foot. The heaviness is, is what I carry around with. And I mean, my body feels light. It's like, it says to me, thank you for loving me. I'm glad to hear that floating has helped you. I'm sure you're doing other things like the other modalities at your facility there. Can I ask you, has there been any struggles with the float pods? I want to be completely transparent. You've been a float pod customer with us for now four years. And um, yeah, we'd love to get your feedback on how the float pod has been for you. Um, have we had our challenges? Absolutely. I mean, who doesn't, right? Like, you know, listen, I knew nothing about float therapy. After my first float, I decided to open up a business. You know, you have to expect that you're going to come up with hurdles and all of these different things. Have we had issues? Yes. Um, but have I had support to be able to overcome those issues? Um, you know, you've been a very instrumental person with, um, you know, helping us, whether it be um, FaceTime and, you know, one-on-one -on -one being able to, this is what's going on, walking me through. So, you know, I feel like, you know, although we've had our hurdles, I feel like I've had unbelievable support on my end, um, you know, and, and different things have gone wrong. Uh, lights have been an issue, <laughs> um, intercom, but for the most part, through and through, um, I can't complain. You know, the, the pods have held up, you know, really well. Um, and, you know, it's been, it's so far, it's been a, it's, it's been a great journey. That's what I love to hear. That's uh, good. It's good to get good feedback every once in a while. And so I appreciate you uh, giving us good feedback there. Um, and I also, you know, in all transparency, I like the bad feedback as well. Some of the things you ran into, like lights, intercom, um, operationally, those things have to be operating for your client at the end of the day. And so uh, we want to make sure we try to get you up and run as fast as possible. There's some things you're still currently waiting on and I got to get you a tracking number on that. So I'll make sure I get you that by the end of the day today. But yeah, let's switch gears a little bit because, you know, I know this podcast is the float podcast and we generally talk to our float pod customers, but our float pod customers like yourself have been in business elsewhere and you've been involved in other spaces like uh, in the influencer space, working with guys, the likes of Tony Robbins and things like that and motivational speaking and that kind of thing. Can you give us a little background on your business experience and, and what other things you have going on? Absolutely. So 11 days ago, I opened up my third business. Um, I own a butcher, I own a high-end butcher, um, grocer, gourmet specialty shop. Um, and um, yes, I've been in business now for myself for uh, 10 years. Um, Congratulations. One of the, thank you. Um, aside from Heavenly, um, one of my, the greatest influences of my life, I have two, I call them my guru, would definitely be Tony Robbins, um, as well as Jay Shetty. Um, I am huge about energy. I believe that all we are is energy. And I believe that business is a spiritual game and understanding that, that it's an energy, right? I believe that we are spiritual beings having a human experience, not the other way around. Um, I've taken, um, unleash the power within that transformed my life, business mastery, really understanding your business and, and understanding the difference between being an owner and an operator. And there are two very different, different differences in that. And I will tell you for many, many years, I was, I was an operator of my business, not an owner. And when you make that transition to becoming an owner, it's a different game. And I encourage all of you out there that have um, businesses to really look into, are you an operator of your business or are you an owner? There are two things. And understanding the differences between, between them, it will free you, if that makes sense. Correct me if I'm wrong. What you're saying is, is working on the business, not working for the business is something you've been able to transition from. Absolutely. It, it takes time. And it takes trust. 
and it's surrounding your people surrounding yourself with people that are more successful than you are right mm -hmm. and really picking their brain and seeing how they got that way right mm -hmm. and understanding what archetype where do you live you know and then surrounding yourself and hiring those around you you know um if you and you have to believe in your business it's you know a business has to have certainty and there needs to be absolute certainty that no matter what you do that your business is going to survive and there's a trust factor within that a trust within yourself a trust within your employees and a trust within the man upstairs as well you know that he has your back no matter what mm -hmm. and you know um i've seen that trust me i've been through the through the highs of of the meat house i have 26 employees that run there you know, I mean, it's, it's a, it's an unbelievable business. Um, Heavenly has been an incredible. We don't run like other float centers. I'm by appointment only. You're by appointment only. So you don't have I any walk-in. I am by appointment only. Oh yeah. And we did that during COVID. And you know what? I tailor the schedule to what fits our needs, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody else tailors it to what fits their clients' needs. There needs to be a balance of life. And most people don't know how to create that, right? And your customers conform to your schedule. And people have a struggle with my my current setup with the whole scheduled call thing because they they get annoyed with the whole idea of having to schedule a call with me. But you know that's something that I, I from from a support standpoint, um, it's it's something that I found works a lot easier for managing the customers. Um, issues and managing the technical support as well as the questions they have, uh, having it set up on a scheduled time. Like we did this morning, obviously I, I, I communicated before that I'd be a little bit delayed. Um, there's some things that do run over, um, but you know, ultimately it's good to have a schedule in place. And, and that's like, that's, that's good that, um, that you're, you're able to kind of set up your business to have just a schedule and have a set schedule where customers aren't controlling your flow. I was going to ask you, have you guys done a grand opening when you guys originally launched in 2018 or? Um, we did, I would say we did a soft opening. I am a believer in soft openings. I just opened up my business 11 days ago and I did a soft opening. And the reason why I did a soft opening is because you want to get out all the kinks. You want to know everything is working. You know, your point of sale is up and running. Your staff is trained the right way. And um, so, so have we ever really had a, 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 an official grand opening? We opened up and we started the build out in 2018. I opened up in, in uh, January of 2019. We were open up a year before COVID hit. And, um, you know, now I would say now that New York is starting to open up a little bit. Um, within the last month, you've seen a, a huge, huge, huge shift. Um, and people are looking for wellness. People are looking for an alternative form of healing. And we provide that. Every float center, spa, whatever you decide to call yourself, you provide that for people. They're looking for not having to, you know, um, use medication or they're looking for an outlet to feel to be more importantly. We are constantly doing, doing, doing. And we have to go from the doing stage to the being stage. Mm. That's what float therapy provides for, for everybody, you know? Love it. You give me energy just talking to you. I swear you get me jacked up. Um, but no, the, uh, but, but the reason why I was asking you that as well is because if you haven't done a grand opening, I would recommend to have a, a formal grand opening, but to do it in a formal rollout. And what I mean by that is, is having a, taking cards, free float cards, uh, to your to your local fire department, taking free float cards to your local police department, um, to the local EMT, and donate them and dedicate one day out of the month for those services. So whether you want to do the salt cave or you want to do the other stuff you got going on there, right? Um, you you can you can have the the free service card as a way to get people in the door, and then after rolling that out, test the market for a month, see how see how many people come in. The idea is to take like the eleventh of every month. You can go down to the local VA hospital, drop off free float cards so that on the 11th of every month, you have veterans come in and float for free. Um, they can't reuse it, but they can float for free. And then, and what you can do is with that is um, 
the idea is to convert them over to a member. Um, but you can set that up to where you do the VA hospital, the local fire department, the police department, and then um, the local EMT. And then at that point, do the grand opening so that all of those folks that you did give a free service to show up. The bigger crowd that shows up for your grand opening, the more people that are going to attract there, whether it's free vendors that want to show up to just promote their products. Um, I've, I've seen I've seen people do really good off of the grand opening rollouts. Um, and that's something to consider. If you, some of these other places have have used this kind of model. What we like to attract is first time floaters, taking Jennifer Bain's lifestyle and promoting that lifestyle to people to get them into the door. And the best way to do that is to give it to them for free and to convert them from free services to working services. Um, and that's the idea. So I just wanted to mention that to you because that's uh, that's something that's really helped people get back on the grind, back on a, on a good a, on a good membership wheel um, to where they're not struggling trying to just get people under the door. If you were to open up another float spa, would you say one, two, three, four pods? I would do exactly what I have there. I would do three float pods. Um, if I had to add an additional um, service, I would add another infrared sauna and another crystal bed. Uh, Crystal Bed does phenomenally well in uh, in Heavenly. Um, so yeah, that's what I would do. What would be the flow of that, right? I work with a place out of uh, Michigan called Inception, and this guy is all outcome based. He likes to set customers up to where he gets uh, he, he sets them up in stages to where they do a, a neural feedback machine, and then they do um, sometimes they'll do acupuncture. He's he's mixed it up a little bit, and then they'll do floating. And then they'll do a follow-up visit to kind of go over the, the, the feedback that they got from the neural feedback machine and that kind of stuff. And they're more outcome-based. Do you have a, a methodology uh, that you follow for promoting the, the overall lifestyle that you have? So um, the answer to that is yes. We do give everybody a tour, all new customers that come in, and, and we, we tour them because people are really clueless, especially about flow therapy. So you're educating them about every single service that we have. Right. And there is an intrigue, you know, people are like, wow, like, what is that? Oh, I've never heard of this. You know, some people have never heard of crystal, your, the crystal bed. Like, what is that? You know, what Tell us you about it. I don't know what that is. What is, what is the crystal bed? I got to check this out when I come in. The crystal bed. It's one of my favorite modalities that we have at Heavenly, actually. Um, the bed came from the Casa de Dominacio in Brazil. There are seven Vogel crystals. Each one of them represents one of your energy meridians, also known as your chakras. It's one of the most powerful forms of healing that you could do physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. There is a light frequency and a pulse frequency. And um, I don't think you can explain quantum physics. I don't think that you can explain energy. However, everybody has an experience underneath this bed, whether you, and you know, um, whether they're consciously aware of it or not. And um, I was the one that when we were building out of heavenly, I, you know, I got, you need to bring a crystal bed in. I called my mom. I was in Brazil and, and I just said, mom, I'm hearing that we need to put, bring the crystal bed in. And the day that we opened up our doors, the very first service was the crystal bed. So I knew that I was dead on track with that one. And um, so the crystal bed is, it's, I want to say it saved my life completely. Um, I have one at home and I go under my crystal bed every single day. It just, it just clears, balances, aligns me, you know, whenever I'm feeling, you know, tired or, you know, sick, whatever, it just gets me back up, back up, back up. You do the crystal bed first and the Himalayan no, stuff. I, do float pod. It's, I go flow pod first. Like it, when they go through the tour, it's, it's, it's how it flows. Um, there's a flow through heavenly. So mm. I have, um, you know, the three pods. And then after that is, is, the, um, is the infrared sauna. The two biggest modalities would be, you know, the sauna and followed by a float. You can body up. And then, you know, um, you know, a lot of people are in, seriously in pain, right? So, you know, how do you, how do you alleviate that? You know, how do, you, how, do you, how do they walk out? I've had people cry saying, you know, I have fibromyalgia and I have never felt like this. This is the first time that I am pain-free. Thank you. You know, like incredible. Mm. Like you can't make that up. There's, there's, it's, it's magical, you know? And that's what I, you know, the whole experience is that um, living in New York, you know, everybody's on the go, 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 go. And they want, I want to do everything. Well, you can't do everything in a day at Heavenly. You can't mm -hmm. because you can overly detox your body. 
You know, everything you, you, you detox when you float, you detox when you're in the infrared zone, you detox greatly when you're under the crystal bed and you detox when you're in the soul cave, right? So, you know, you have to be able to educate your guests that you can overly detox your body. What does that make you sick or something? Or what's the, absolutely, absolutely. It can make you sick. So Hmm. it's all about educating, you know, and hydration and, you know, um, really understanding and, and getting to know what your clients needs are, are, are all about. And they'll tell you, you know, they're, 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 they're looking for wellness. Most of our clients are really looking for wellness right now, you know, looking for um, a place to be. With floating and the other modalities you have going on at Heavenly, what does the future of that look like? Well, I believe you are what you eat. Um, you know, put good in, get good out and really understanding, you know, um, I would love, I would love to have a meat house next to Heavenly Float Spot. I mean, that to me would be an award-winning combination. One, I'm in the same place, you know, uh, breaking up my time. It's, you know, it's, it's all about balance right now. Um, and, and I, you know, I have to, I take my hat off to my mom and dad, because while I have been opening up the meat house, they've been, they've been holding down the fort. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Is this your second meat house or is this your second? This is your second one. Okay. Wow. So you've opened up. How, how many, when was your first one opened up? 2013. 2013. Wow. Kicking butt and taking names. What were you doing before you got into the business world? Yogi, I'm a personal trainer. I mean, I've been a life coach. I've kind of done it all, you know, and don't ask me how I got into the meat house. I ate 10 pounds of steak tips in one weekend. And I said, oh my gosh, this is incredible. I'm like two working parents, you know, I have two kids. I'm like, this is candy for kids. <laughs> Literally, that's how it happened. And I and and then you know my my ex husband and I we bought this franchise. And um, to make a long story short, you know we bought the entire company in 2015. And and um, you know I I'm divorced and I and I run this company now. And I and and when COVID hit, um, if you ever asked me would I open up another meat house, my answer to you would have been no, absolutely not. I mean it's it, it's it's an unbelievable, it is a tremendous amount of work that goes into that business. And um, what I witnessed there was um, what we did during COVID and what we are still doing during this pandemic. And it, it reignited a passion within me to serve my community even more. And, um, you know, the business that I just opened up, it was again, divinely guided. And, um, you know, it's, I get, we did a soft opening. I do my grand opening in, in, in April. And um, yeah, you never know what the man upstairs is going to throw at you at times. You know, you just got to be, you got to listen and you got to be open to receive and hear more importantly. I love to hear your story. Honestly, I could, I could honestly talk to you for hours on end. I mean, you, you are definitely a, a, an entrepreneurial personality type. You, you are definitely a person that has, you, you drive me, you motivate me um you've you've done amazing things this last decade and i'm only excited to see what you do next and if heavenly is in en route to expand um i would hope that you obviously go with flow pods in the future and, and you know um obviously we're, we're our goal in the next year is to expand our our team try to have more support support staff um bringing on more people to help out with the marketing end we want to get all of our locations out there and promote our locations this podcast will be linked to your guys' social media so you guys can reuse it and promote your location and that's the idea is to try to get the word out there as much as possible with floating and these other modalities i wanted to ask you before we switch gears on something else the meat house itself is that a franchise i have the capability of doing that um i changed the model going into this store my original store is seven thousand square feet um, I cut the model back um, when I opened up this one um, and I am testing out all systems and processes. Uh, I have a lot of people calling wanting to buy a franchise. Um, I don't know, you know, I have to, I'm basically coming up with a team, you know, a training team and, and all of that. Um, you know, it's in the back of my mind to franchise this one. I think more if I was going to franchise anything, it would be heavenly because heavenly is heavenly is my baby. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's, it is my baby. The meat house is a baby in a different way, but heavenly is where my heart really, really lies. Um, because you know what you're doing. 
for your guests. You know the services that you are providing and you know that, you know, um, to watch your guests leave transformed, whether it be physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually, there is no amount of money that you could put on that. Amen to that. You know, everybody is all about, you know, profit over people. And, you know, for me, it's people over profit. And regardless of how much money you make, you get more satisfaction and, and more gratification from heavenly than you do the meat house. If even if it came down to finances, you, you, you get more gratification. It sounds like from the love of heavenly. The love, well, the love and just the, you know, your guests that, that, you know, are looking for something and all of a sudden they, 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 they find it, they find it. And, you know, to me, every day when I walk through those doors, it's a magical experience. And, and I hope that everybody that has a float center um, is able to experience that, that, you know, that post flow glow that, you know, like I, I get on there all the time, like, this is my post flow glow. You know, I didn't have a day off in, in over a month. And I floated the other day and it was just like, my body was like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, like, you know, we have such an incredible service that, we, that, that we're offering, right? Mm-hmm. The world needs just to be educated about really what the benefits are on every front. You know, the flow community is going to get stronger. We're on the cusp of something that is so big. Um, it's, you know, it's coming and, and, you know, it's what the world is looking for. It's been around. Think about how, how long, how long has the dead city been around? <laughs> right. We've had float tanks out for 40, 50 years. Anything that you would, that you would want from float pot or want from the technology of floating. That's the last question I have for you today is, is there anything you you're wanting to see in the future, um, that float pot introduces, whether it's neurofeedback information, voice command, the user interface being easier to function. What would you like to see from FlowPod in the next five years? Oh, technology for sure. Um, technology, definitely um, number one. Neurofeedback, absolutely. I would love, you know, in, in my crazy world to, to basically see um, when you hit that theta state, how deep do we go? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, to me, that's so, so, so important and really, um, more testimonials about, you know, um, the benefits, but a lot of research based on, you know, different diseases that, that, that are out there that, that it really does benefit from. I can't wait to build my, my, you know, my next heavenly. And I love, I love flow pot. I, I, I haven't had a, you know, we've had issues, but nothing where I've been, you know, nothing major. Thank you, God. Knock on wood. <laughs> no. I'm with you. I'm knocking here. <laughs> so, well, um, I appreciate you coming on today. I, I really do. And I, I, I ultimately appreciate your guys' business. And you guys bought pods four years ago. And we look forward to helping you guys in the process of opening up the next location. Uh, you guys have been great customers to me. And I really appreciate your guys' uh, your guys' commitment to floating and, and staying, sticking through everything, hard times, good times, everything in between. And I plan on coming out to your location, hopefully in the next month. I know I keep telling you guys month by month. Um, there's been a few things that have come up, but uh, I do plan on coming out here in the near future. So tell Bob and Norma I said hi. And uh, again, thanks for coming on today. Tom, thank you. Have an amazing day. You too.